guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I am so excited because we're gonna be swatching all of my favorite nude lipsticks. I'm sure a lot of you saw the thumbnail and were thinking how on earth could one person have that many favorite nude lipsticks? Like not even just my nude lipstick collection, my favorite nude lipsticks. I know, I know it's excessive. I'm not saying it's not, okay? But I have loved makeup for years and years, basically as long as I can remember. And I collect makeup. Lipstick is easily one of my top most favorite makeup categories. I freaking love it. And if you were looking at the thumbnail also thinking, those all look exactly the same, you're not entirely wrong. Okay, you're not, but also hear me out. So as somebody who has been in love with makeup forever and is actually a freelance makeup artist, which I told you guys in my get ready with me, get to know me video that I posted recently, I'll link that below if you haven't seen that yet, but I have played around, of course, with so many different lipsticks, both on myself, on my friends, on my clients, and I have seen how the smallest changes in undertone and color can make a very big difference in the way that your finished makeup look looks. And the same lipstick can also look completely different from person to person. So if you've ever asked your friend, what lipstick are you wearing? It looks amazing on you. And then you run out and purchase it and put it on yourself and are like, wait, that doesn't look very good. It doesn't look the same. That's because undertones can completely change the way that lipstick looks on a face. So that's why I have so many different lipsticks, aside from the fact that I just love lipstick, but because they all have something slightly different going on. Yes, a lot of them are so similar. No, I do not need this many lipsticks. I know that. It's just one of my favorite things, you know? Hopefully this will help you guys to find out a lipstick shade that you also will love. And if you have a similar skin tone and undertone, to me that can help but also if you don't that can also kind of help you to figure out maybe if something would look similar or different on you so without further ado enough blabbering let's get into the swatches okay let's get a little close and personal here I have my hair tucked behind my ears so that it's just not even in the way I don't want it getting in my lipstick so let's start off I tried to go from lightest to darkest here I didn't really nail that perfectly. I tried my best because a lot are so similar. It's kind of hard to do that. Okay, we're gonna start out with the palest for sure. And that is from Maybelline and it's a cream lipstick called 920 Nude Lust. So obviously Maybelline, this is very affordable. We love that already, but Maybelline is definitely one of my favorite drugstore lipstick formulations because it's very pigmented and very, very creamy and comfortable to wear. So this one is just, oh, I mean, you guys can see, it gives off a sheen to the point where it almost looks like I'm wearing a gloss, which I love because I'm definitely a gloss kind of girl, but it's just such a comfortable lipstick to wear. Nothing about it feels drying. Like it feels like I have a really, hydrating balm on or something like that. And the color I think is so pretty. It's such a good, truly light nude. So if you're somebody that's very fair and on the lookout for a nude that has kind of beigey undertones, is not too warm, is not too cool, this could be your perfect shade. When I have self tanner on, this is definitely too fair for me, but how I like to use it then is to plop it into the center of any other lip combination. And that helps to just lighten it up a little bit and add a little bit more dimension to the center of my lips. I always like like that some fun so really pretty shade also okay before I forget I do have a video up talking through how to figure out your undertone so if you don't know what your undertone is I would maybe pause this and go watch that video first I'll have it linked below I talk through how to figure out your undertone and how to actually use makeup to complement that and not have it clash or not make it look cohesive because I know that that can be really confusing. So I would maybe watch that first because I'm going to be talking about undertones a lot in this video. This one, pretty neutral. And because I love you guys, I'm going to show you what lip gloss looks like on top of every single one of these lipsticks as well. So for the rest of the swatches, I will just show the lipstick first and then the lip gloss on top of the lipstick right after that and I won't talk through it. The lip gloss that I'm using here is from Sephora. It's just called their Glossed Lip Gloss in the shade Boss, so 01. It's completely clear. So I love clear lip gloss because it just adds that shine, gives you that juiciness and dimension, but doesn't alter the color at all. I have a couple other glosses that I'm obsessed with. My favorite of all time is from Buck 
unbox them. I talked about that in a recent favorites video, which I will link below, but those are going to change the undertone and color of your lipstick a tiny bit. So normally I don't have a problem with that, but I really want you guys to truly see what this shade looks like on its own and with a gloss. What I would recommend if you are using a clear gloss is to wipe it off after you apply it on your lipstick because otherwise that will start to tint this because it will take the color from your lips and transfer it to the tube. So I would wipe it off after, but this lip gloss is amazing by the way. It is the perfect consistency. It's so juicy, but nothing about it is sticky. It's not too heavy. It feels so good. <laughs> what the heck? Like 10 or $12. Next up is Natasha Denona, I Need a Nude. First of all, I'm obsessed with this Natasha Denona packaging. It is like, this is my kind of packaging. Rose gold bullet on the inside, but it's completely white and just structured. It also is magnetized. See that? Oh my gosh, I love it. Very sturdy. This also smells really good. It's the subtlest kind of vanilla scent. Love. So this is a really good example of a brown-based nude that's also very light. So if you're very fair and want a nude that doesn't wash you out and isn't too dark, kind of right in between, but leans a little bit more brown, this one is going to be great. Another really pretty one. I love this shade. It kind of reminds me a little bit of butterscotch, but not quite as warm as that. Isn't butterscotch like yellow? I'm trying to picture butterscotch chips. That sounds so good right now. That's kind of the vibe that this gives me. And brown can definitely be a tricky color to pull off depending on your skin tone and undertone because certain browns can just look, I don't know, just something not quite right, at least on myself. So this is one that I love because it just, I feel like is a really good in between of a few different shades. So kind of between a beige and a brown, if that makes any sense at all. I don't know. It's not too warm and too honey toned, which just doesn't look great on me. I need a nude. You need this lipstick. This formula is also so comfortable. It definitely doesn't give off that same kind of sheeny shine that the Maybelline one does, but it feels so good. It's definitely very soft, really nice pigmentation and opacity here as well. Next is from Mac and it's actually a matte shade and it's called Love You Back. I just freaking love MAC lipsticks. They are the best. Also, if you have quite a few MAC lipsticks like I do, I highly recommend getting clear lids like this because then you can actually see the color of the bullet when it's sitting in your lipstick organizer or however you have things set up. And that makes it so much easier so that you don't have to take the lid off. That could just be a me thing, but I know that there are other lipstick collectors out there. So I'll link those caps in my description box below, as well as my lipstick organizers. I have a couple different ones. I have a stacked kind of tiered one for my bullet lipsticks. And then I have a taller one for liquid lipsticks and glosses. Love them both. They're just the clear acrylic, very clean look. So this one, even though it's a matte, doesn't look flat at all. And it also feels very, very creamy. I would say it's a little bit more of a dry formulation than this Natasha Denona lipstick, but hardly. They're very, very comparable. It feels super comfortable. It still feels very creamy. Like I would not even say that that's drying at all. So this shade, this one actually makes me look a little bit more washed out than the first two, even though when you swatch it, like on my arm here, which I will show you guys at the end, it looks deeper than those shades, but just because of the undertone, it looks a little bit I don't know, milkier? I don't know if that's the right word, but I personally love this kind of undertone on myself. So this definitely has a cool undertone to it if you're picking up on that kind of purpley grayish look. I don't love something that's super gray, but anything that has a little bit of a hint of purple to it, I personally find is flattering on myself because my lips naturally have kind of a little bit of a purple undertone to them. So there's a couple different ways that you can use undertones either within your skin or your lips themselves to figure out which shade might be best for you. Again, I talk about that in the undertone video, but this is one, even though it kind of looks a little bit more washed out once I have a gloss on it and use a little bit of a lip liner that I I'm obsessed with. Such a good neutral for me. Next is one of the Becca Ultimate Lipsticks and it's called Sugar.
I think this is my favorite one so far. So one of the things that I like about Becca lipsticks is that they actually tell you if they are warm or cool. So this one has a C on it. This has a cool undertone to it. So this is a cool toned brown, similar to that Natasha Denona brown, but definitely is cooler and kind of has a little bit more pink to it. So if you want something that leans in the brown family, but isn't as brown or as caramely as that Natasha Denona one, check this one out. This one, feels so good. I mean, these all have felt really nice so far, but something about this feels so soft on the lips. I'm obsessed. Kind of same thing that I was saying before where it's not quite as sheeny and shiny as that Maybelline shade. It doesn't look like I have a gloss on it, but it just makes my lips look very healthy great pigmentation. I'm obsessed with this lipstick. This is actually the only Becca lipstick that I own and it makes me want 700 more from them because this formula, what? I need more. Next is actually a Tarte lipstick and it's called Beach Babe. I love this one. Oh my gosh. This is another one that I'm obsessed with, but it's definitely warmer. So it's really similar swatched out to that Becca lipstick. It's just like the warm sister of it. So it has more of a peach tint to it. Whereas that other one is more pinky brown, kind of in the same color family though. I love it. I think it's so pretty. These Tarte lipsticks, nobody seems to talk about these, at least in the videos that I watch on YouTube, the makeup videos that I watch all the time. I don't see anyone talking about these lipsticks and they're so good. So it's from their Color Splash collection. They have so many wearable shades. It's it's the best. I feel like there are so many lipstick ranges from other brands that have a ton of different colors, which is fun, but not very much in the wearable category. And they might have a couple, but as you guys have seen already, the smallest changes in undertone for these lipsticks definitely make a big difference in the way that my overall face looks. I mean, not my face, but you guys get it. The way that the completed look turns out, it looks different. So I always am really sad when a brand comes out with a really amazing lipstick formulation, like a new lipstick launch, but only has a couple wearable shades because a lot of the times I feel like those shades are ones that don't end up up looking the most flattering on me in my opinion you know so I love that this line has so many wearable shades like I feel like you would definitely find your perfect nude in this color range so good I have one other one towards the end of the video very pigmented very comfortable to wear it's not quite as thick and creamy as some of the other ones that I've talked about but I feel like that will make a lot of you guys actually really like this one and gravitate towards it because it's not going to be something that feels like it's going to slip and slide and bleed a little bit throughout the day. This will stay put a little bit better, but it still looks really healthy. So oh, love, love these tart lipsticks. Next is another MAC shade and this one is called Blankety in Blankety. Why is that so hard to say? Blankety in their Amplified Formula. This is another one that I love as well. And another one that looks pretty pale on me, even though swatched out, it looks darker. I just always find that interesting. This is such a good, truly beigey pink. I feel like this would be flattering on so many different people that have fair to light skin tones. Oh, it's so good. Something like this, I often feel looks scary on me until I have lip liner and a lip gloss on top. Lip gloss completely transforms the way that lipstick looks on me and just a little bit of liner. I'll actually show you guys quickly. I'll just take a random one from ColourPop here. A little bit of liner can go a long way in bringing your lips back to life with a shade like this that might feel too washed out at first. Okay, I don't know if you guys are really going to be able to tell a difference on camera for that lip liner. Hopefully the gloss, you can clearly see. My lips are looking juicier, but I normally don't apply lip liner like that. I put it on first, but any sort of lip liner that's just a little bit darker than the lipstick shade that you're wearing will help to kind of just frame your lips so that they don't look washed out on the face. Pop some gloss on there and it will really bring it to life. So I'm obsessed with how this looks on its own. It's probably not a lipstick that I would wear all that often, but like this, this kind of thing is my favorite kind of nude. Okay, next is a NARS lipstick and, okay, this word is clearly French. As somebody who doesn't speak French, at first when I was reading this, I wanted to say 
pour du jour. <laughs> I was like, all right, I know that that's not how you pronounce it. That's not proper. And I was thinking about it. I grew up as a dancer. I took ballet, so I'm familiar with dance terminology that's French. And I feel like it's pas de ja. But I could be completely wrong. It's probably not. Maybe it is. Pour du jour, pas de ja. I mean, the name will be right here. This is one of their matte formulas. Okay, so this one is definitely the flattest mat, I think, or one of the flattest mats that I own, just meaning there's not a ton of dimension to it. Kind of that sheen that some of the other cream lipsticks give off. This does not have that. So normally I would not wear something like this on its own, but I actually am kind of liking the way that this looks. The reason I'm so obsessed with this is because I feel like this is my perfect your lips but better color. Like this really is similar to my natural lip color, at least I'm probably gonna watch back these swatches and be like, no, it's not. But I feel like it gives off a very similar vibe to my natural lip color, but just enhanced a little bit. So this is another one that I'm obsessed with when I have a little bit of lip liner underneath it and a lip gloss on top. It really brings it to life. I just think it's so pretty. This is another one that definitely has a cooler undertone. So it's a little bit of a purple tint to it, but it's not a straight up purple lipstick. Oh, this is just so good. I feel like so many people would look amazing in this. Oh. And even though it is one of the flatter mats that I own, it's very, very lightweight. So if you're not into kind of a heavier, creamier lipstick, I feel like you may actually really love this because it just feels lighter on the lips. It's still comfortable. It's just not nearly as creamy as the others. I mean, look at that gloss. Like, is this my perfect nude? This is the problem. This is why I have this problem. This is why I'm swatching so many lipsticks right now. But this might actually be my perfect nude. <laughs> okay, next we have another MAC shade and this is Viva Glam 2 and this one's a satin. Okay, so if you're not into that kind of purpley undertone and you like something that has a little bit more warmth to it but still isn't peachy, this is your lipstick. This is the perfect light. It's still light, but it's not super light like some of the other ones. Light kind of getting a little bit, a little bit more mid-tone, pinky brown. Oh, this is so good. I freaking love this color. I feel like there isn't anything else I need to say. Another one that's very comfortable, it's not quite as creamy as their Amplified formulation. So if you want something again that's a little bit more budge proof, and not going to slip and slide as much, you'll probably like their satin formula. Okay, next is another really affordable option and it's from Revlon. It's a cream lipstick called Bear It All. I only found this lipstick a few months ago and it's already one of my all-time favorites. It's so pretty. Oh, oh my gosh, I love this lipstick. So not the shade, but the formulation I feel like is a your lips but better formulation because it's definitely more sheer. It's something that you can build up to a decent amount of opacity like I have here, but just with one or two swipes it is on the sheerer side, but I know that a lot of people love that and actually look for that in a lipstick, something that's just more natural and not super full coverage because that full coverage look can sometimes just be a little bit intense, especially if you have a lighter makeup look going on. So this is one that I feel like like a lot of you would gravitate towards because of that. There's one other, oh, it's actually next. Oh no, there's two other. There's two other Revlon lipsticks that I have in this formula and two other shades. So hopefully one of them will be your shade, but this one is definitely one that is a really nice warm toned nude. A little bit of peach, but not too orangey at all. Oh, it's just so good very comfortable to wear as well. Okay, next is actually one of the other Revlon lipsticks that I have in their cream. So this is their super lustrous lipstick. I don't know if I said that, cream formula. This is in Bare Affair. This 
one's so good too. <laughs> oh my gosh, what the heck? Like Revlon, nice work. This is so pretty. Ow, just pulled my hair. So this one is really similar, of course, to that last lipstick, but is not quite as warm and peachy. It has a little bit more of a cool undertone to it, but it's not super cool. Like I feel like this is a really good neutral pink a little bit of, I mean, it's not completely pink. You guys know what I'm saying. Neutral, nudish pink. Okay, next is the one lipstick that I have from Huda Beauty. So this is from her matte lipstick collection and this shade is called Anniversary. So this formula is pretty similar to that NARS matte lipstick that I have. It's just a little bit thicker and a little bit creamier. So it doesn't feel quite as traceless on the lips, but it still does feel pretty lightweight. And it's really comfortable, even though this is again, one of my flatter mattes. Not a ton of dimension here, not really a shade I think that I would wear without lip gloss, but it's a really pretty shade. Just a really good wearable light brown. Another one that's pretty beige in undertone, so leans more neutral. I know that for her matte lipstick collection, she has kind of the same type of shade and a warm and cool version but a lot of them are actually pretty different. This one definitely has a warm undertone to it, but it's not too orangey, which is very important to me in a brown. Otherwise I cannot wear that, at least. I feel like I can't. Next is from Morphe, and this is one of their matte lipsticks in the shade Honey. I'll swatch first before I talk. So this one is really similar to the Huda Beauty Anniversary shade. It's just a little bit deeper and a little bit more cool toned than that one. So if you prefer a brown that has a little bit more of that cool undertone, then this one's definitely one to check out. I do think it's super pretty. It's one that I prefer when I have a little bit more color to my skin. I don't know, I'm looking in the viewfinder. When I'm like this, I need gloss on top of it. Otherwise, I just don't personally love it on myself. So I actually do have a lip swatch video of just Morphe lipsticks. I have a ton of Morphe lipsticks that I swatch for you guys, both cream, matte, and mega matte. And I let you guys know my thoughts on their formulations in that video. I have differing thoughts depending on the type of formula, and I actually do not recommend their cream formulation. So. If you are wondering why that is, that video will be linked below. Or if you just wanna see all of the other shades swatched, go check out that video. I actually have a few different lip swatch videos already up. I have one on MAC lipsticks, Morphe lipsticks, Milani, a few ColourPop ones. I'll link all of them below. I don't have any ColourPop lipsticks in this video because they have discontinued almost everything. So I don't know what's going on, if they are relaunching them or what, but that's super frustrating. I don't want to swatch lipsticks for you guys that you can't go out and purchase. Otherwise, it's kind of like, what's the point? I mean, I know it's nice to watch, but I feel like if I'm watching a lip swatch video, it's because I want to be able to pick one out for myself and I would be very annoyed if almost all of them were discontinued. So I had a handful from ColourPop that I was going to show you and then I was like, Okay, they don't exist anymore apparently. But anyway, so the Morphe matte formula, I really enjoy. I think it's very comfortable. It's definitely creamier than the NARS one and the Huda Beauty one, but again, doesn't have a ton of dimension to it. However, I still think it looks healthy on the lips. So I like it. Okay, next is another amplified lipstick from MAC and this one is called Half and Half. Every time I put this on, I forget how much I love it. It is so pretty. This is my perfect kind of brown lipstick because it definitely leans brown. Like if I had to give this a color, I would say it's brown, light tan, but it has some pink in there to where it makes it a little bit more wearable, more everyday. Oh, it's so good. It's such a good lipstick. <sighs> Next, another MAC lipstick. This one is a matte formula and it's called Yash. So this one is super similar to half and half. It's just a little bit more golden, has a little bit more of a peach undertone to it, and of course is matte. So if you want a brown base nude that's similar to half and half, but is a little bit warmer, then this one is definitely one to check out. Very comfortable, I think it's super pretty, but this is one that I personally don't wear without lip gloss, or it's one that I will pop in the center of deeper lipstick shades and wear it that way. 
Next is another Morphe lipstick, and this is their Mega Matte formulation in the shade Kissy Face. So this one definitely looks pretty orangey coral on me right now when I don't have self tanner on. So this is actually not a shade that I wear in the winter months or when I don't have self tanner on. With a little bit of a deeper skin tone, I think it's beautiful. So if you are somebody with medium skin tones, I think this would be stunning. If you have really deep skin tones, this would be such a fun, bright, light kind of orangey color. It gives me creamsicle vibes. I feel like that would be so pretty on deep skin. So not one that I love right now, but again, when I have a little bit of a tan and of course some gloss, it's one that I think is really pretty. This is definitely the warmest nude that I will wear ever. I don't like to go warmer than this. Otherwise, I just feel like it's not flattering. It looks too orange. So, and again, this is their mega matte. So it's a little bit more drying than their matte formula, but I think so comfortable for a matte lipstick. It still has a good amount of creaminess to it to where you can rub your lips together. It feels comfortable. It doesn't feel like your lips are drying out. It just really stays put. Next is my favorite lipstick of all time all time, all time. It's a MAC lipstick and it's in their cream sheen, creme sheen formulation. I've never known how to say that. In the shade Modesty. This lipstick has never let me down. This has been my favorite for years. Clearly I have tried so many lipsticks and I have never been as obsessed with a shade as I am with this one. This is my perfect color, at least in my opinion. This is the color that I gravitate towards most that I have a really hard time finding in other collections from other brands. It just seems to be very hard to find. That really pretty pink that's not too pink, that has that little bit of a purple undertone that I was talking about, but it's not too cool. Like it is just perfect. I love this shade. And even though it's their creme sheen formulation, it has a really good amount of pigment to it. It's pretty opaque with just a few swipes. Super comfortable. I've tried some of their other creme sheens and they're pretty sheer on me, which I think is what that formulation is supposed to be. But for whatever reason, I feel like this one has a really good amount of pigment. I'm obsessed. This is actually my most used shade on bridal clients. So almost all of my brides end up going with this lipstick shade. I call it the sisterhood of the traveling lipstick because it just works on so many different people. It's just the perfect bridal lip color. So if you're a bride, if you have a friend that's a bride, MAC Modesty, you're welcome. I just realized that we've been doing this entire video with me sitting here with a full arm of lipstick for no reason. Like there's no reason for me to be doing this with these still on my arm. But we're almost towards the end, so we're just gonna leave it. Okay, next is a shade from Wet n Wild and it's one of their mega matte, right, lipsticks in the shade Skinny Dipping. This one's so good too. This is one of my all-time favorite drugstore nude lipsticks. It's definitely in my top five. It's so pretty. It's just such a good, slightly cool tone neutral. That didn't really make sense. It's neutral with a hint of cool, okay? There can be an in-between. You can see that little bit of a purpley undertone. It's kind of like a brownie, grayy, purple. It's so pretty. I'm obsessed with this lipstick. It kind of gives me MAC Modesty vibes, of course, in a matte formulation, but it's not as pink as MAC Modesty. Oh. Okay, next up is actually a KKW lipstick in her nude collection, and it's Nude 3.5. I know that there are some people that are just like, I refuse to buy anything from the Kardashian family. That's fine. We have a lot of other lipsticks here for you to choose from if you are one of those people. I personally, I mean, I don't feel that way. If there's something that I think is really good, I'll buy it. And this is one of those cases. I think this is such a good lipstick formula. It's a cream finish, very comfortable to wear, very opaque. 
And this color is really, really pretty. It's similar to MAC Half and Half, but a little bit warmer and a little bit deeper. So if you like that kind of brown tone nude and you have medium to deeper skin tones, this is a really pretty one to check out. Obviously I'm fair and I still wear this shade. It's just more of a mid-tone brown for me. Okay, next is the last Morphe lipstick that I have. It's another mega matte formula in single AF. I love this shade. So again, we're starting to get a little bit deeper. This is not something that I would consider to be a nude on myself. I would call this kind of a mid-toned pinky brown, but it's gonna be nude on some people. Nude is different for everybody, of course, of course. But I love this shade. I think it's so pretty and I'm still including it in this category because I feel like it doesn't belong anywhere else. It's not a pink, obviously or a straight up brown or red, of course. Like it doesn't really fit into any of those other categories. So I feel like nude is the best spot for it for me. Oh, it's so good. Next is a classic, a classic from MAC. It is Velvet Teddy, which is a matte. Velvet Teddy is so freaking good, oh my gosh. This is super similar to the one we just swatched, Single AF from Morphe, but just a little bit more brown, kind of more of a rosy pink instead of a warm brownie pink, if that makes sense. I think this is so pretty, oh my gosh. If you're super fair, this could almost lean vampy for you. If you're medium to deep, this would be such a gorgeous rosy nude on you. I love Velvet Teddy. I mean, there's a reason it's a fan favorite. Look at it, look at it. Okay, all right, y'all. Last MAC lipstick, it is called Faux and it's in their satin formulation. Okay, so I feel like actually all of the rest of these don't quite fit in my nudes category. Like this clearly is not a nude on me, but I didn't really know where else to put them. And I also don't have that many other pink lipsticks. Like I'm not gonna do one of these for pinks. So I feel like, I mean, I had to include it because I love this shade. And if you're somebody that has really cool undertones, this would look like a nude on you, you know? I just have warm toned skin, so it looks clearly pink because this is a really beautiful, cool toned pink. If you're looking for a pink that's not too bright, not too much of a baby pink, just not too much, but still is clearly tinted pink, I feel like you're gonna be obsessed with this. It's so pretty, so wearable, very feminine. Oh, what the heck? Mac, you've done it again. Okay, next is the next Tarte lipstick that I was talking about. This one is called Salt Life. I am obsessed with this shade. Oh my gosh, it's another one that clearly has that purpley cool undertone that I just love so much. This is definitely something I would consider to be a mauve on me when I'm fair. When I have a tan, it's a little bit more of a nude, but oh my gosh, this one is so good. So good. Okay, next is from Urban Decay. It's one of their Vice lipsticks in the shade Back Talk, and this is a comfort matte. Okay, so I feel like this one looks the least natural on me, if you will, out of all of these lipsticks because it definitely is very violet. It's like a violet, I would just call it a violet lipstick. Violet based brown, I don't know. On people that do have really cool undertones to their skin though, this is not going to look nearly as violet. This is going to be something that's a little bit more wearable, a little bit more every day, and I wanted to include it in this video for that reason, but also because I still love this color. It's really fun. It's like a little bit something different, a little bit of a pinch of color that we don't have in those other shades without being a straight up purple lipstick, you know? Second to last is the last Revlon Cream Lipstick. This is in the shade Brazilian Tan. I'm obsessed with this shade too. I think it's so, so pretty. It's a little bit harder to be precise with the application just because it's not quite as pigmented and it's super creamy, but 
obviously it's so comfortable oh my gosh this is just a really gorgeous warm toned brown if you liked a lot of the browns that i showed before but felt like they were a little bit too light for you hopefully this is one that can work i think it's beautiful on deep skin tones would be stunning oh my gosh this is so good. I really want Revlon to come out with more lipsticks in this formulation, this collection, because I think it's such a good formula. And if you're somebody that really likes a comfortable, creamy lipstick like this, but you want a little bit more coverage, just pop on a lip liner under it. And I feel like it's perfect then. And last, we have the one Charlotte Tilbury lipstick that I own. I had to try it out. I had to see what the hype was all about. Of course, it is Pillow Talk. I held out on this lipstick forever, even though it seems to be everywhere, what everyone's talking about. Maybe that's just because she does a lot of advertising that comes my way. That could very well be it. But this is what they wear on the Victoria's Secret runway. This is what all the angels wear, and it just looks so beautiful on everybody. But $34, I was like, no, no, forever. And then I just really wanted to try it. I kept, I kept looking at it and was like, you know what? I work my butt off. <laughs> working full time, doing freelance on YouTube. I'm going to treat myself to a lipstick, even though it is crazy expensive, and we'll see, you know, if it's worth the hype. And I have to say, okay, I do really think it's a beautiful color. Don't get me wrong. This is a really nice, warm-toned, rosy color that I think would look pretty on so many different people. This is a matte formula. I don't remember if I already said that. And it's very comfortable. It doesn't feel too heavy. I would say it's kind of in between, like whereas NARS was super lightweight, some of my other ones I'm forgetting. I can't remember which one I was talking about that feels just a little bit heavier and creamier. This I would say is right in between. So I really, really like this formula. And this one definitely makes my lips look healthy. Nothing flat about it. But in saying that, I was a little bit disappointed because I feel like a shade like this is not going to be quite as universal as if they made this just a little bit more neutral like took out some of that rose to it and made it I don't know I feel like that would be a more universally flattering shade and make it worth the hype that's out there you know what I mean also I feel a little confused because I don't feel like this is what this lipstick looks like on Victoria's Secret Angels I feel like their lips are much pinkier and lighter and not this kind of rosiness do you know what I mean so that's where it just goes to show lipstick can look completely different from person to person this was not at all what I was expecting and while I think it's beautiful I mean I do I think it's super pretty I personally do really love a nice terracotta color for the fall time and for the winter months it just wasn't what I was expecting. So if you like this kind of shade, it's a great lipstick. Is it something that I think you can't find anywhere else? No. All right, you guys, we've made it to the end of the video. That is it. Those are my favorite neutral slash nude slash everyday wearable lipsticks. Maybe I'll call this my favorite wearable lipsticks. I feel like that makes more sense than my favorite nudes. I might change that. <sighs> Regardless, that's it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I really hope that you found this helpful and found your favorite nude. Let me know in the comments below if you think you found a nude that's going to be perfect for you. I should stop saying nude. A color, a lipstick. If you found one that you think is going to be perfect for you, your best shade, leave that in the comments below and also just let me know what some of your favorite shades were that I swatched. I just think it's fun. We can compare notes on our favorite shades. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and click on that notification bell. That really helps me out and supports my channel, but also helps to make sure that you don't miss out on my next video. Let me know in the comments below what you guys would like to see next from me on this channel. I'm happy to do whatever. Do we want more makeup videos? Do you just prefer strictly skincare? I just wanna make sure I'm posting content that you guys are interested in. So I can definitely do whatever that is. Just let me know in the comments. Other than that, my next video will be up in a few days. So until then, I hope you have a great few days.